Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Scarlet's Fever podcast. Joining me, Big M, as always, Catboy and Carwin. Good evening, lads. How are we doing? Hello. Hello. I'm good. Yeah, very that's good. A, that, was, that was a rather deep hello from Carwin, were there? You know, anything <laughs> to tell us? Uh, yeah. Um, I finally found I've got a, a low point in my voice to reach. <laughs> It's oh, only taken 37 years for me to find it. <laughs> going to be like James Earl Jones now. He's going to go famous <laughs> across the world. Everyone will know his voice <laughs> from audio box here. <laughs> voice acting over there. He'll be doing everything. Fair play. So uh, other than the obvious, had an enjoyable weekend? Yeah, of course. Sun was out. Oh, sorry, the deep voice has disappeared. <laughs> uh, sun was out. Uh, yeah, no, it was a good weekend, actually. Yeah. Um, Love a bit of rugby on the telly, back to back, and uh, good weather. Yeah, all in all, uh, and I, I, I tested negative for COVID after a congratulations. A so yeah, I was chuffed with that. I had a <laughs> tough week last week, so you worked hard um, for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm looking more human again this week after last week. So um, yeah, all good. Are we still testing for COVID even now? Well, when I say tested for COVID, as in I felt bad on Thursday. I felt better on Saturday morning, so um, I'm going to say that I that's my test. How I felt. <laughs> I, I think I think workplace it. some workplaces do have a policy of take a test. If you're negative, come in. If you're not, don't. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I was about to say my missus still has to do it, but she works from home. But they still ask her to do it. I know. It's it's, it's absolutely that's, stupid. That sounds like a GDPR thing. Maybe, maybe they're trying to up their stats or something. Maybe they're claiming money on it, even though she's working. Ah. <laughs> okay. That's it. So let's get on to the to this week. And uh well we've had we've had quite a bit of news. Wait, uh, can I do my can I do my show and tell first? You want to do your show and tell? I'll go yeah, for I'll it. Do my show and tell. Okay. So I went on Vinted and I have gone from the owner of zero Scarlet Stops to three Scarlet Stops for the princely sum of fifteen pounds. And I'm going to show you my tops that I've got now. Audio listeners, this is a YouTube moment. So top number one, uh, first of three, I got a, a, a training top. This one's from Macron. And it's this one. So I wore this I wore this to the game. And it's the one. Oh, I like that. There's some pictures of you at the, at the game. I like that. Yeah. So You're it's. Looking at the hill. Yeah. Well, I was posting them. I'm unavoidable, man. Yeah. Um, the. <laughs> The, so there you go. So there it is. Um, I like the red front. So it's only red. It's only red on the front. So the back is all navy. So you think like, oh, it's not. You know, it's not scarlety. But you realize like you you own loads of other navy navy stuff. So if you're wearing jeans or something like, it goes with that quite well. You got a blue hoodie, blue hat, and things. Um, so it looks good. It still says scarlet on the back. I've got to be honest. The 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 labels on the back feel like they're going to come off after one wash. Yeah, I'll be honest. That's, that's a staple of Macron. Yeah, but yeah. the uh, the logo on the front is all stitched in. That's quite nice. Um, I like the like the color texture on the front as well. Um, I think this is this is something that Nike are doing with their training tops at the moment. I quite like it. So yeah, I like that one. This is the kind of it's a little bit executive. You kind of look like you work for the Scarlets when you wear it, which. We don't. <laughs> I think it's better to say. Yeah, clearly we don't. Probably never um, will. But uh, depending yeah. on letter, depending on what letters come off on the back, you can always pretend that your name's Carl. Yeah, oh, that's God. true. Well, you'll be all right with that. Just Carl. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, next one. Hang on. For, For everyone, audience, yeah. yeah he, he For was everyone left, watching yeah. or listening this, this, he said he prepped beforehand. I did prep. They're over there, right? So. This one's nice. This is probably the nicest one. Okay, so this is. Oh. This is a Cougar. I'll tell you one thing about it. I haven't worn it yet. Um, oh, you're gonna love it. It does smell of someone's loft. So it's vintage. So it's in really great nick. It looks like new, uh, but it has clearly been sat in someone's oh, one loft. Set. I found a problem. What's that? It's. Uh, I can. I can see the size on it. It's for a child. <laughs> it's <laughs> medium. Uh, wait to see my next yeah, one. Size. So, so this is a, coo- a cougar one. I can't remember what season this is. Oh, that's a that's an early Christ. We're talking maybe ten years ago. 
I'm it's an old say 2013, one. 2014. Oh, I think it's earlier than that. I think it's pre 2010. Doesn't say. I think it was Rhino then, wasn't it? 2013, 14. No, but I do like I do like the cougar stuff. Um, so it's it's red. It's a really really nice shade of red, and it's got the white detailing white down the sides. It does it does need a wash before I can wear it. It does smell a bit like loft. Um, one thing I'll say about it, it's yeah. heavy. It's quite heavy for what it is. Good so, material. Yeah, so it feels robust. Um, but I'm chuffed to bits with this, to be fair. But that's clearly the nicest one. I should be wearing this all the time from now on. And then last one. This is another Cougar one. Good. That's, that's always a good start. You ready? We're ready. We're waiting. Come on. Yes. Oh. Yes. That is the one. It's the rhubarb and custard top. To be fair, the the yellow is not bad. And I do like the design. The missus says she doesn't like it, but I think the actual design and the construction of it is fine. It's just the dipped in blood bit at the bottom that is the problem with this one. It looks like that the the wearer has had his legs shot off. It's... It's still, I still don't think it's a nice design, but it was three quid <laughs> on Vinted. So I was like, I can't not get it. This is a small low. Now, I think I'll get away with it because on regular replica kit tops, I think I can get away with wearing a small, whereas a polo top or something needs to be a medium at least. Yeah. Well, I've just had a look at our, our kit deals. And uh, pre 2009, we had Cougar and we had them for 2014 to 2017. So, oh. That's a nice kit. Like, I love, like, I think a Rhino one is probably my favorite for just the fit on it. Uh, it's just just a plain red home one. It just fits lovely, and the collar is absolutely massive for my big Of course, you know, obviously, famously, Scarlet's kits are all walking, talking, bill, billboards, advertising hoardings. So you got that on the arm. Obviously, Carwin all knows all this because he's got one. Have you got one, Mark? You have to get one now. No, I haven't got one of them. Uh, I will have to have a look right now, but I doubt, I doubt anyone, you know, in, in, in human sizes would actually have one to sell. <laughs> to tell you what, though, I need, I should really be nipping in and around the charity shops and collect for loads of they'll, them. They'll probably will be. Yes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I might have seen that one in, I think it was, you know, what the, the, the dog charity shop. Uh, it was like I think it was behind the register as well, so like you couldn't miss it. Well, it under the counter, <laughs> they don't sell it over the counter. Oh, it was up it's on the wall. Like, the end of the <laughs> have, you the, have you got any? Have you got any of the twenty sixteen rhubarb and custard tops? And they go. Come in the back. Come on, the back. Come back. Come back later. <laughs> I think. I think the only terrible shirt that I really want is the uh, the quartered European one. We had the chocolate one. See, that, James from Osprey's Ari says, oh, that's a classic shirt. I think it's horrid. Oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> but I want to have it just for the sake of it. That'd be awesome. It is, it is sort of collectible in that way. We've had some funny change strips. What did you think of that blue and white one? Was that a Newcastle Emlyn one or something that we had a couple of seasons ago? Oh, that was the... I think that was one of the three counties. Yeah. Ones. Oh, yeah, it was, wasn't it? Sunday, yeah. That was weird. My boy has got that one. It's it's probably I could run upstairs and get it now, but uh, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay, is is that who show and tell over for now? Now that I know that Vinted exists and you can get Scarlet's jerseys for three quid, I'll probably be, be back on it before too long. Okay, so uh, me and Karen we'll go away and we'll decide your mark and we'll we'll let you know next week. You know, and if it's okay. too good of a mark, we won't be back next week because I'll be too ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, before we had Hill's awesome, amazing, fantabulous show and tell, we were going on to a bit of news. So uh, a bit of news that came out literally, it felt like 10 minutes after we recorded last week. We have signed another player, you know, and it's a lock. So, you know, I'm not complaining too much. Max Douglas from, oh, I forget the first part of it, Cannon Eagles over in Japan. So, big rangy player, very, very loose, very athletic. So he's not the uh, slim, the grunt. Rock. Yeah, he's he's not the grunty, you know, heavy ball carrier that people seem to cry out for, even when we get one in Alex Craig. 
Uh, so what what's uh, what are your takes on this by then? Well, you tell me. You spent six hours on Roby Pass watching him. <laughs> I didn't actually. I watched about forty minutes because I was so knackered after going through all the end games, <laughs> pointing out which one is in which round, which one he started in, which one he was on the bench in. After that, he doesn't let you play in, which was damn annoying. Um, so that actually worried me a bit. I think it got to like round eleven or round twelve, and then he just doesn't feature for the rest of it. So I don't know if he's picked up a knock. So uh, that's you know another traditional scarlet signing, you know, coming injured. But uh, obviously we don't know anything about that. But yeah, I think he's a uh, very similar player to Lousy. So if we're looking for that combination of constantly having a heavy lock and a more loose athletic lock. Bringing him in means we can have two pairs of just copy and paste and just go and go and well, go. Craig, Lousy, Moggs and Douglas. Yeah. That, and Jack Price, look, I'll be honest, he's, he's not far off Moggs in, you know, even quite... Sort of in between, really, isn't he? Like, as early as, you know, beginning this season, I thought Jack Price was probably above, you know, Morgan. So... You know, those two are very level playing field when it comes to, you know, Scarlet's locks. So we've got a hell of a stable. We've now got five frontline locks that I would be happy with having any combination of them in the team. Yeah, but only one of them is Welsh. That's the only thing. What, what do you mean? Two. Which two? Price and Jones. Oh, sorry. I thought, no, five, hang on. Craig, yeah, Lousy, Craig, Craig, Craig and Douglas aren't. Right. Oh, okay. Fine. I thought you were maybe counting for Fita as one of them. No, no, I wouldn't count for Fita as a lock anymore. You know, those, those days are long gone. They died back. <laughs> they... Back in what, June of last year. <laughs> so, are we all happy with them? Do we, did we need this sign-in or do you think it maybe could have been better spent elsewhere? Personally, I think, I don't think we needed him. Uh, I'm not saying he's a bad signing. I think he could be a good addition to the squad. I just, it's not, it's not what I feel we were crying out for. Um, I'd have preferred us going for a maybe more traditional 13. Um, I think the, I know we've got Joe Roberts, but he's injured at the moment. The likelihood is he'll be involved with future Welsh camps when he's fit. I just, for me, the, Eddie James, Johnny Williams partnership, as good as it's been, they're a bit too like for like. We've almost had an inside inside centre and an inside centre playing and big gap then. So I'd have rather us look um maybe for a 13, but obviously he's got some talent because he's he played for the Waratahs, he's played in Japan. I think he's played for the same team as Faf de Klerk. So hmm. um there must be something about him to, to to play with such esteemed international teammates. Um, but yeah, he, is he better than Lousy? Jury's out on that one, I think. And if he's not, then probably not the signing we needed. No. Well, it feels a bit like a panic. Yeah, to to put who he is as a player in that team as a context. Japan only have a small number of slots set aside for foreign players. So uh, for you to get one of them, you know, it's, it's good going. You, you've got to be half decent or at least, you know, fully decent in most cases. Like, I don't see where he's really going to fit in, you know. Uh, it's like, do, do we want to have two... Uh, mobile locks because in the event of because Craig allows you to start us we know that I mean it's not my preference I've already spoken about that before but if we end if Craig goes down and we end up with Lousy and Douglas as a locks for 60 70 minutes our scrum is going to suffer so I, I don't mean to be negative I really don't I hate being negative about the stars I'll be negative about any of the other three regions any day that we happily do that but it just when we look at what we've got, was it really necessary? I mean, if Lousy was going 100 percent, 100 percent, maybe maybe this is over the dotted line before Lousy had signed on. Who knows? But you know, that's just where it is. Hey, you've been awfully quiet on this one, but 
No, I think you two have covered it nicely. I think it's 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 become such a cliche of where the Scarlets need to sign. Everyone goes second row, and but we don't. We've actually got. We've spoken about this on the pod before. We've actually got quite a lot of second rows now. I'm I'm much more worried about the centres and the back three at the moment in terms of depth because I was thinking because with Combia going, I'm thinking Which who, we don't who, understand. No one understands why. I'm, I'm thinking who would have who would have played in his place, and it's like with that, it's Max Page, the guy you know, kids on the bench. He's that was his second ever pro game of the weekend, and then no one. We, we're waiting on Steph Evans to come back. You know, we've spoken about him. At length, and ready for Tom Rogers to come back. So, is it would it be that Tom Rogers would come back, and then would he go to fullback with Nicholas on the wing? I, I don't know. So, I, I I feel like we need an out and out winger, and maybe maybe Max Page will end up being that. It's just we haven't seen it yet, and I just don't know whether I want to put all the eggs in the basket of an an, an academy kid at this stage who I uh, who who is. Uh, yet to yet to show himself at this level. That's nothing against I mean, Mac Page. I'd say that again about any academy kid. So yeah, sorry, so, I, think uh, I think the thing with that is the inexperience around him in the back three as well. Where we've been blessed the last few years, we've had Lee, Halfpe- Lee Halfpenny there. We are Steph Evans has been there when he's fit. Johnny McNichol there. They were established, experienced players. When you've now sort of looking at Tommy Lewis, a back three of Tommy Lewis, Joe Nicholas, Max Page. There's not, I know Johan Nicholas is mid to late 20s, but at this level, he hasn't got an abundance of appearances under his belt. So he's relatively inexperienced. So it's just, um, uh, yeah, it's just, that's a worry as well, isn't it? That, that the lack of maybe old heads there. Okay. I, I think I might have started this, but we've turned what should have been a positive in terms of a signing into what seems like quite a negative. Okay. So we'll move on. Um, we've had two sets of fixture news uh, in the past week. The first one was from the Junior World Championships coming at the end of what is now this month. So uh, Wales are in a group with Spain, which is beatable, and then New Zealand and France. So it's... New Zealand are beatable. I, I don't know. Did you past, know? 9-6. Horrendous conditions in New Zealand. Lost to one point against them last year. Yeah, I just looking at where we were in the under twenties. I mean, finishing off. Yeah, we were look we looked pretty decent in our last match, but I, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm there right now. Um, I was actually I was probably actually saying at the time, you know, oh, we've done a, we've done a real good job on it to be there. Yeah, we can take this to New Zealand now. But no, um, we do actually kick off the the tournament out for out, like our own kick off is against New Zealand, so we play. On Saturday, the 29th of June, that's a seven o'clock kickoff. Uh, we then got, I think it's all five five day turnaround. So we've then got Spain on Thursday, the 4th, that is at 2 p.m. Before our, skin. Yep. And then our final game on Tuesday, the 9th of July, that's a half past four kickoff against France. Uh, there will be semi-finals and finals for wherever you finish. So they will be on Sunday the 14th and Friday the 19th. Last time we played France at the Under-20s World Championship, it was a, they could have gone to about 10 men and still beat us. Yeah. I mean, mm. France, I don't know what they did, but they did something amazing. And they were kind of hoping it would have come through to the last World Cup, but it didn't. But no, uh, their setup seems... Amazing, whatever they're doing to their players from 16 to 20 is phenomenal, and they are the standard bearers. There's no way around that, you know. I think they've won the last three or four, you know, incarnations of this now. Obviously, we had that, that gap with COVID, but yeah, so the thing, the top 14 that's that's the difference. Our boys are playing, a majority of our boys are playing academy mm-hmm. or. Do a premiership whilst the French players, a lot of them are getting exposed to the top 14. So I think, I think, I think there's got always going to be a gap until we somehow find that competitive, le- competitive level at under 20s in this country. I, I, I don't think we'll ever be reaching the potential heights. And hopefully, that's what Super Rugby Cymru does. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I'm not. 
I'm not saying we need 14 teams or 10 teams like France or England, but you know, having such large player base does mean when you've got a decent youngster, there's a much better chance. Have, of having sports. a bigger population helps at yeah. age grade as well, more than it does at senior level, because that's why France and England traditionally do really well at under twenties level is because, you know, at under twenties, there are some men and there are some kids. And if you're a big nation, you can piece together 15 fully, fully developed adults, whereas smaller nations like us probably can't do that. No, I mean, that, that is something to look at as well. But you know, I'm I'm not 100% confident going against the baby blacks, but I, I think that'll be, that'll be an interesting fixture. That's going to be, that's, that's our final, as far as I'm concerned. It's the first game up. I don't know what warm-up matches, friendlies, if any, are going to happen. Uh, I would hope that there's some... Aren't they playing... Didn't they play someone the other week? They played Ab- Aberavon, didn't they, or something? That was Durin. That was either Durin or just before the Under-20 Championship, Six Nations. Right, okay. Oh, yeah, it was before. It was definitely before. Hmm. Yeah, but so I, I can't find nothing public about, you know, any games before and before they... Uh, obviously... The Junior World Championship is in South Africa, so before they fly up, I don't see any fixtures. I can't see any. I'd like to think there are some, even if we go for like a tri- like a forty minute training game mm-hmm. against one of the teams in the other groups. So maybe we catch them cold, but that that's that is our world. That's our cha- Junior World Championships final. If we beat the Blacks, then we got a chance of making the top four, and that would be absolutely outstanding for us. Spain, 100%. We got to beat Spain. And then France is France. France is just awesome. You know, mm-hmm. Just the way it is. So that's one set of fixtures. The other set of fixtures are the ridiculously early 24 25 season United Rugby Championship fixtures. So I'm assuming both of you have had a chance to have a look yep. through our season. Yep. And who I think you might have a comment on this. It's a lot better than it was this season in terms of the start. There's a chance for us to get momentum there. I, It's almost kind of pressure on because mm. this season we went to South Africa. There was no pressure in terms of results. It's going to be pressure on. By the way, I worked out that between Wales's last game, which is against the Reds, and Scarlet's first game is 54 days. So... It, it, so we should have a full squad. It shouldn't unless someone gets crocked in Australia, we shouldn't that be resting anybody. Yeah. I know our first game's away in Benetton, so maybe they'll send a bit of a not full strength for that and prepare for the first proper game at home in round two. But for me, it's almost kind of pressure on bit for for these first games we need to be winning three or four four of those first six yeah like we, we if you read out talking. what they are so people can know what i'm talking about <laughs> we were I've, all I've talking on the group yeah you've got uh, yeah i've got yeah, them in front so of we me all talk- yeah sorry <laughs> you go that's on. brilliant so uh we were all talking on the group chat before and then there was any, i think me and you carry both said five of the first six hmm. were winnable so you've got them in front of you so why don't you Ring off, probably. Yes. I don't know. There's ten up to Dragon. Yeah, so it's, yeah. So well, that takes it up to New Year's Day then. So first match away, as uh, Hugh mentioned, away at Benetton, then back to back at home, uh, Cardiff and Connacht. We then, funnily enough, play Cardiff for the second time in the season in round four on October the twelfth. We then home to the Bulls and Zebra, and that's like the first block of six. I actually think that block of six either sets us up or ends our season. I think that's how big the first six matches are. If we, if we can get five, four or five wins there, we're laughing. If you want to pick up a win, season's over. Um, so then after the, uh, what you call them, Autumn Internationals, last weekend of November, we travel to Glasgow. Uh, then there's a few European matches. I'm basing that on the date difference because... Round eight is the loved, hated trip across the Luffer to face them that shall not be named on Boxing Day. 
And then we see in the new year with a home match against the Dragons. Um, I think... So, seven, six wins out of nine. And we're looking very good, I think. And I think yeah. six six are winnable. Um, mm. But, <laughs> yeah, it all depends. As much as I can see us resting a few boys for Benetton, go out there and get a win. Start the season with a big W. You gear up then for Cardiff and Connacht at home. Then Cardiff, we, we could be four from four by the second weekend of October. And I know I am optimistic and I am <laughs> very crazy in my prediction sometimes. But from the first six, the only game I'm a bit mm, about is the Bulls at home. Yeah. Um, and it depends how they travel as well. Well, they're not, never going to not... send their first team. They'll still be resting their box by then because we're not their yeah. first tour game. So I think they have one or two tours up here before us. Oh, so right. okay. yeah. it could be that it, they're, it's just their B team. And South African, well, the Bulls probably travel the best out of the South Africans. If it was yeah. the Stormers, you know, it'd be a different conversation. The, uh, it's a big game. It's one to look forward to. It's one to put a ring around. Like we, this yeah. is a a targetable game. So mm. I, I'm 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 with you guys. I think it's uh, other people outside the scouts might think we're mad. But if you look at those fixtures, it's got to be four wins from the first six. Yeah. And I, mean, and I think if we want to make the playoffs, we've got to wrap it up by round fifteen because hmm. we end up we end the season home to Leinster and a trip to South Africa. We can't be wanting ten points from those three games to get to the playoffs. I think if we're going to make it the playoffs by round fifteen, we've got to be laughing and then pick up what we can from the last three. But it's certainly an attackable fixture list in terms of visible points of where we need to be at to achieve our goals, which is what we couldn't have this year. Because obviously starting in South Africa, um did we start in South Africa this year? Yes. We did, yeah. 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 Starting in South Africa like that, you're on the back foot immediately. So at least this fixture lift list, in my opinion, gives a real fighting chance. Mm. Yeah. I mean oh, go on, Matt, sorry. Yeah. When uh like I look at this from a, from a whole season structure, and I, I think my only issue is you know one outside the European games we don't have a home game in November or December. So you know talking from a fans front, that's that's an issue in itself. And for some reason, like I, I understand the first one before the autumn internationals, but we got two weekends where there's no rugby, and that's before Christmas and. You know, I, I've seen the way the URC have uh, written with, when their rounds are. They've tried to make it sound, make it sound as though we don't. Uh, but if I if I got to think of this, we got the first weekend in November, so the first, second, and third, we don't have a game. So okay, fine. But then we don't have a game for the following three weeks. So that's four weeks. So it'll be five weeks from game to game. That's one issue for me. And then another break we got is the weekend of December 20th, 21st, 22nd. The URC that, of that's, that, that's, that's our a, Isn't that... It, that's because the Boxing Day game falls midweek, doesn't it? It's on a Thursday, but we could play on the Friday easy enough. You know, you, there's a like way you can do it. But, sort of putting our Super Rugby Cymru hat on for a second, because the Scarlets haven't got a game... Everybody can go and watch the Queensland every derby. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. Like that. Um, I quite like the way that's fallen this year, and the fact that there's no clash with Super Rugby Cymru, so the derbies could be packed because none of the regions are playing. Yeah, I mean, that is a positive. Um, from where I'm looking at, it, though, we got yeah, course, that, that yeah. game, in, that one in December, that is fine because of how the games fall in and around there, I think we got like three or four games before then a break. Do you think... A big chunk. I don't know whether this is off offside or not, so you you guys can tell me if I'm wrong. Could you could you play Drover's Quinns at the park? Or is that... Uh, no. It's a bit of revenue, you... I think, for the club, isn't it? Yeah. Unless you're making a spectacle of it, putting on like something absolutely massive and paying for the fans to come down because 
it's a long old it's a, it's a long enough trek from Carmarthen, but from Llandavri down to Llanelli, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, it, it's worse than Llanelli to Cardiff. You, you literally you're talking your whole day gone, you know. And that's that's another point when we come to community or semi professional rugby still being at a two thirty kickoff. You know that that's an issue in itself. But trying to get that fixture down to Llanelli with nothing else around it. It's, it's, I can't see it working. I, I yeah, wish it would. Yeah, the twenty eighth as well. Might might still have family down for Christmas or something, and might go as a family to watch the game because you can walk to the ground or whatever, as opposed to having to trek down to to um, Okay. I like the idea, but you know, I've always yeah. said about Judgment Day, the having the Premiership all now the SRC sides playing over a Saturday and Sunday. So there is, was yeah, so. From a Scarlet point of view, I'm I'm really worried about having you know a a massive break so early in the season, and then obviously Six Nations time. Since we've stopped the Anglo Welsh, I I've always been concerned about not having boys being match fit, match ready. We need to chuck a, a friendly or two in there, don't we? Yeah. I mean, if we could get, I mean, m- my vote, no one else is. I I would want six extra friendlies in there. And people would go, oh, that's too many games. You know, minimum, that'd be 28 games over a season. We, we used to have well more than that, you know, and no one batted an eyelid. The season that we got to the league final and the Champions Cup semi final, we would have played eight, nine games in Europe and eight. 21, eight game, Europe, yeah. 21 games in the regular season of the league plus another. Three on top of three. that. That's yeah, thirty-three that's... games. Yeah. So there's no reason why we can't do it. And when they talk about, especially in Wales and in Scotland and in England, about the problems of money in the game, you've taken away five home fixtures. So you know, that that's all I'm going to say on that. Okay, I think that's the end of uh, our news. Uh, there's a little bit more to come later. But we have got something very exciting for you, the fan, and especially for us, the producers. Uh, we've actually picked up a sponsorship. So we are being sponsored by a company called Manscaped. Oh, you know, I hope you're ready for this because I've been prepping myself for quite a while and I'm probably going to bother. Just by it. the way, there's multiple. I know this from Pirate. There's multiple scripts. So I don't want to know which one that you've picked. Oh, 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 this is this is something called Smooth Sack Summer. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so we're, we're basically kids right now. We're literally a bunch of 14, 15-year-old boys laughing over what this is. Okay, you, you'll have to listen and make, make your own decision. Okay, so here's our introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to announce that Smooth Sack Summer is officially upon us. When you're playing in the summer sun, make sure you're groomed from pubes to bum. Thanks to our friends at Manscaped, you can make this season your smoothest yet. The Performance Package 5.0 Ultra is the ultimate bundle to keep your boys downstairs cool while looking hot. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer, Get 20% off and free shipping with the code RUGBYBALLS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping, postage as we would say, with the code RUGBYBALLS. It's spelled R-U-G-B-Y-B-A-L-L-S at manscaped.com. It's smooth sack summer, boys. Get on board or get left behind. Like a pro, Mark. I could try. I, I enjoyed yeah. that. So, uh, is that what you've been doing in the middle of the day? Oh, yeah. So, you both had your products. Like, you know, I've just shown mine. Yes. Here's the big question, though. Have you used it? Yes. You have. Okay. So, <laughs> which legs. product did you get? Uh, the uh, Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Uh, yeah. That's, that's what we got. Did you get something different? I got the. Yeah, I got the the performance Ooh. package 5.0. But that is because there's only two of you and there's about 20 of us. So I Yeah, think that probably will... is what it is. 
I, I think they would have probably like, oh, Christ, we can't give that many free points. Yeah, exactly. That's why I didn't put my name down again to get it to get it through two different pods. But yeah, no, I so, yeah, so in, my, in my stuff, just tell all the listeners about the other things you can get. I got a, a pair of boxes, lushest boxes I've ever owned. Um, oh, pro- so. Proper luxurious. Yeah. Um, nose hair trimmer stuff like that i haven't i haven't i've used the nose hair trimmer i haven't used the uh lawnmower yet a nose hair trimmer i could definitely do with that literally i was driving in the car earlier and the mr like you've got a nose hair dangling out and honest to god i i if, once i notice <laughs> once she tells me about it and i physically see it in the mirror i'm like i gotta get that bad boy and <laughs> oh my god the pain was unreal <laughs> like nose trimmer be an idea for me so uh Carolyn, you've used the product. The did you use it for what its intention was? That's the question. Uh, well, it says on the th- on the box, groin and body hair trimmer. So I uh, I used it for what it says on the box, and <laughs> um, very impressed. Yeah, very impressed. Highly recommend. Um, I, the thing I struggled with most was changing the um, what you, like the, clip. the length. Yeah, the length on it. But once I'm once my brain was able to do that, I was uh, away. But no, just a, very good. Just and it's waterproof as well, so you can take it in the shower. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't yeah. tried in the shower. But and it's got a light. It's got a light as well, yeah, so that you can uh, see the different skin tones. And it's not a, a very, um, very good product. It's posh, and, isn't uh, it? It's it's hefty and stuff in your end. Oh yeah, it's just even the, even the way it arrives in the box, it was like just looks looks quality. Yeah, it's good. Um, Manscaped certainly have a. I've got a fan in me. I'll, I'll say that much anyway. Yeah, so I, I've got the package, the whole package by you. So it's it's a rock hard box. It's you know real good quality. Obviously, it comes with a rechargeable lead, and you know. This this is just the lawn mower. Now this isn't the package. You know, like you can get. You think you can get this on its own? You yeah. get. Uh, I've used this, and honest to God, I was scared from my wits end. <laughs> so, uh, but it's got no nick technology. I know. I I was shocked at that. This is like so. No, obviously, when you have anything, you're obviously you, in that area. You're obviously really cautious. And uh, fair play. I, I, I've done a good job. You know. I, I you know. I, both of them are still intact. I mean, I've had the snip, so it's not as though I was worried about them. Yeah. So, if um, uh, what I say is, I assume it's mostly men listen to this. Um, if you have a, a partner and you expect a certain standard from them in that department, you got to ask yourself if you're holding yourself to that same standard. And if you're not, you need to use Manscaped. That's good. We're going to steal that. We're going to edit that uh, bit out, the... and I'm, I'm going to reread exactly what he just said. Yeah, send so, that um... to Manscaped. That's their new promo <laughs> pitch there. Oh, it's actually got Manscaped on the back of the, the little box as well. I don't know if you can see it because of, because of the light. Oh, the, you can see it shining now. That's, yeah. That's cool. I like that. It's plush. But now, um, you know, I, I'm <laughs> obviously I'm a hat, well, I'm not a customer, but I'm happy with it. So, yeah, uh, if anyone does decide they would like to give it a try, uh, use the code rugby balls r u g b y b a w l s at manscaped.com and you get 20% off and free postage and of course you're helping us in the process you know i i i, I don't know what we're going to get we're not getting nothing out of this uh personally obviously this is just going to help us pay you know for zoom and all the hundreds of podcasts that we got planned over the over the next couple of years okay so that was that was good. I, I'm happy with that. You, you both yeah. happy with that? Very pro. Yeah, it was good. So, uh, Manscaped, your boss, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, on to the next bit of news, the real news that has come to us today, Monday the 3rd of June at 2pm to be precise. We've had a, a summer tour. <laughs> or, we've had a Wales summer tour squad announcement. <laughs> So um, we've we as in the Scarlets, we've got six boys involved. So that's Kensley Mathias, Harry O'Connor, Kieran Hardy, Gareth Davis, and Sam Costello. Ryan Elias has been rested. He is not being considered for selection. He's ruled himself out. Yeah, that's that's what we're hearing. That's what yeah. 
people so call said. Yeah. Oh yeah, as I said, did he? I didn't yeah, know yeah. it. So, I mean, I'm a bit underwhelmed, you know, from the squad as a whole. Is I don't know what to make of it. But uh, from a Scarlet's point of view, there's there's a few players I'm you know quite gutted for, especially when you consider who they've actually pulled in. You know, I, I think Morgan Jones can feel quite aggrieved. You know, Johnny Williams. And then I think Tommy Lewis has ruled himself out by picking up an injury. I, I honestly think that he would have been there instead of Keelan Giles. And then I'm just assuming if they think it's too early for Eddie James, which I don't, but if it means he gets another full preseason with us, then all the better for us is what I say. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, when when I've been saying over the last few months that Sam Corsello is look, looks like he's got a weight on his shoulders, now you're going to believe me because he's playing every minute of every game for Wales for the foreseeable. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, obviously, Elias, you know, just um, full power to him, taking the decision, I need time off. All rugby players should have the right to do that. Um, fair play. Uh, Moggs, I think, unlucky. Two Scarlet Scrum Halves in the Wales squad must be a day ending in a Y. Uh, yeah, Eddie James and Johnny Williams. I don't see where the go forward is coming from in the centres now. I mean, it's, it's going to have to be Grady. That's that's the mm. only option. Like I, 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 but, by the way... He's not, he's, not pick, he's not picked Tompkins to not play him. So that's who will be playing 12. Or will he play Watkin at 12 and move Tompkins to 13? Either well, way, he might, he might whichever way around, if he partners Tompkins and Watkin, that doesn't excite me on any level. I have to say, I don't think that does anything as a combination. Unless, what does what does that bring? What does that offer? Unless he throws caution to the wind and goes Ben Thomas at 12 and Tompkins at 13. But then yeah, that, that's not a Gatlin esque pick. So I, I really am. Um, yeah, so, I mean, yeah. I, I'm. We obviously know that quite a good chunk of these boys, and I guess 10 of them, are not available for the South Africa fixture. 10 non Welsh based players, 10, 10 exiled players, if you want to call them that. Mm. That is, that's got to be the most in ages. So that's, this is oh, my, yeah. that's my. This is my kind of thing about the twenty-five cap rule. I have seen no data to suggest that it does anything, and I have seen no data to suggest that it improves Wales as a team. And that ever since we've gone initially to a sixty cap rule and now to a twenty-five cap rule, the number of players we are picking from outside Wales has increased, not decreased. Yeah, oh, and let's let's be honest though. When you've got when you've got quality players playing the third division in Japan, being picked oh. for a Welsh squad, <laughs> then it's a shambles. And sorry, he shouldn't be anywhere near an international squad after what happened before he left. Um, you cannot have somebody who breaks the law being picked as a, mo a mole model, a role model for children. Morgan Jones should be f furious, gutted, um, all of these emotions because I, I just I, I honestly think this is Gatlin's Tom Bowler squad. He's chucked every Welsh player in the world into a hat, picked 36 names out, and these lucky 36 are the ones who've been announced in the squad. Um, and, and the way we know it's a Tom Bowler is because we got four hookers and five tight heads. So it just it just came as it did. Five tight heads for four games. There is no logic whatsoever in that nonsense. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many more Scarlets probably deserve to be there, because obviously we've, we've had a poor season. Let's not um, play that down. But in terms of some of the selection that have been done, makes me question why Gatlin's in the job, because I just, I, I don't get it. As in, he's, he's said today um he's looking for a more physical outside half so he's picked that beast of a player in sam costa 
So obviously he, he puts a shift in in defence. I'm not denying that for a second, but he's not exactly um, the most physical of fly halves in the world. I just, I just, I obviously I'm chuffed he's there because I think he's the best ten in Wales. But I, I just don't understand Gatland's thinking in his selections with what he said. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean something that's bugged me is that uh, he said we're building for 2027. There is okay. no such thing as building for a World Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we know that's your opinion and, and all that. But one thing that annoys me is you've pulled in two 31-plus-year-old locks that haven't been involved for three years. How for is that building? Yeah. You know, if, if it was a case of they've been involved for the last year, 18 months or so, yes, I 100% understand that. But you've literally pulled them in for two games. You know, if Corey Hill is lucky, you know, he might be allowed to come for that third game against South Africa, but that's not a given either. You know, he's still got to get permission from his club to come and play. And, you know, even speaking on him, I am really surprised he's able to get a contract in Japan just based on what their culture is like. They, he must have somehow hid that massively from them before getting a contract because. There is not a Japanese person in this world that knowing what he did would hire him. And, and I can say that with 100% confidence. I mean, five tight heads is, is a bit much. And three of them are non Wales based. So we know that Kieran Azarati and Harry O'Connor are going to be, you know, 3 and 18 against South Africa. And we've also been told that the squad is going from a 36 man down to a 34 man before they go to Australia. So for me, that means one hooker and one tight head to go in. And because the three non-Wales based players, day one is going to be getting on a plane to Australia, that for me tells me Harry O'Connor is there for South Africa and that's it, which I think mm. is a disservice to him. And we'll, I'll get on to more of that when we talk on the next bit. Well, the, uh, um, the... He, he got asked about Giles and um, Bevan in the press conference, and I know it's not our players. And he said, oh, we've picked them so that we have the play, the bodies there in training. So those two are basically holding tackle, tackle bags. That's why they're there. Yeah, well, Bevan, 100%. Giles, I'm, I'm not sure on the number of bodies we've actually got for South Africa. So, you know, he might actually get a cap in our game. It no, depends I... whether they play Grady in the centres or, or on the wing. I'd almost be tempted to go Thomas Grady in the centre because at least they've played together before. Well, yeah, like mm. before this squad was announced, and I was I was looking, you know what, you know, we're, we're squad. Okay, what am I thinking? I was thinking nine, ten, twelve, thirteen was going to be Scarlet just for that cohesion, especially for for the South Africa game, because we haven't got Joe Roberts, who is the number one thirteen. You know, we know that Gatlin should surely know that by now. And look, Mason Grady has got a future at 13. I don't doubt that. But defensively, he doesn't have, you know, the reading ability to, to do it yet. So it's literally those two. Mm. So if you can't have Roberts com combined with someone you want at 12, then you just go with whatever works, especially for this one game. Mm. It just, I, that and done it so many times in his first 12 years. He made decisions that baffled everyone's minds. And when three million people are scratching their head at your decision, it's not the three million people. I mean, yes, but, he, some of it's worked out on occasion for him because I still don't think he's had the you know the greatest record of the Wales based on the players we had. So uh, sorry, Kyle, when you were going to say something, I was going to say from a scholar's perspective though, get it for those boys that haven't been picked that probably deserve a spot, but it does mean we love them for a full preseason and being selfish from a regional point of view i think that's more important i think team Wales can do what they want i'd much rather us have a a squad firing on all cylinders for that trip to benetton and that we make the playoffs next year um so uh, yeah i'm i've gone from being angry to thinking actually let's look at this from a selfish point of view yeah. chuff for the six boys and get it for the rest, but even let's... like someone like Johan Lloyd, who you know, we've d dissected this game plenty of times on this pod to go from starting at fly half in Twickenham to not in the squad in three games. Like, is, is he a 
Is he a victim of being passed from pillar to post in terms of being played at 10, played at 15, coming off the bench? Is Has he been made a scapegoat? Well, he's picked Jacob that? Beetham as a 10 and he's never played 10 in his life. Well, yeah. <laughs> For me, uh, this actually reminds me of, uh, of a Max Boy song surrounding the, the <laughs> late great Phil Bennett. But uh, yeah, no... Lloyd not to be in the squad is a shambles. I mean, personally, <laughs> I don't think he's a great ten. You know, he, he doesn't have. Who's Wales back up fifteen now? Um, Liam oh, Liam Williams. Sorry, that, I, forgot. That I, forgot. Youngster. I forgot Sanjay was back. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, how long is he back for? That's the question. Oh, actually, no, it's Wales. He's it's Wales. Are he fit for every game? Okay, um, <laughs> I think that pretty much covers it. So congratulations just, to the six points. Just on very, board. very quickly on Ben Thomas. I think Ben Thomas is excellent. I think he should be playing for Wales. I think he should be in the match day 23. He has started one game in the last three seasons at fly half. One game. Please. So please, could we stop with the Ben Thomas is better than Sam Costello chat? What a load of nonsense. Yeah, I mean, but, but at, at playing 12, yeah, Ben Thomas is better than Sam Costello being a 12. I think Ben Thomas is, I would think about starting him at 12 for Wales. And I think that if you work it right, him and Costello could work well together because Costello and De Beer are quite similar. So we know it worked at Cardiff, so it could work for Wales. There isn't anyone saying that Ben Thomas should be starting ahead of Costello at 10 is not basing that on any data. The only people who could be saying that are haters, to be frank. Yeah, well, the, the thing is as well, there is no data to say that. For there to be data to say Ben Thomas is a better 10 is to have data on Ben Thomas playing a 10. So it, it doesn't exist. It, it can't be done. Um, yeah, okay. So congratulations to the six Scarlets, potentially only five going to Australia, if what I'm thinking is right. Okay, so now we've got something actual positive, really happy to talk about. Saturday, 3 p.m. at the, not the Millennium, not the Principality, the Cardiff City Stadium, uh, City, sorry. <laughs> um, so, how do you want to chime in on your experience before we go off on the match? Well, my first time going to Cardiff City Stadium, and I got there. About two o'clock. And I went to the car park opposite. And I pulled up and there's a guy in a tabard, the attendant. And I went right around the window down like, oh, am I okay to come in in this one? And the guy goes, this is the parking attendant, goes, we well, can if you want, it's 15 quid, mine's Like, all right, okay. You're supposed to be the guy running this place. So just telling me not to come in here, it's too expensive. You know, that's an interesting management tactic but i i was i was kind of like i'm here now i need to get in the ground so i was like all right fine and he goes it's cash only I'm like oh you are kidding me so i went to gloucester to see gloucester versus benetton and the rotary club by the rugby club had opened up their car park for people to park in and there was a little old lady running that car park she had a card reader and i could pay on card to use that car park but to park at C cardiff city stadium no it's cash only shambles so i was like i don't have any cash he goes all right well you'll have to go to you'll have to go to asda then i'm like oh yeah right okay. and get some cash out of asda I'm like, all right, okay and he goes you have to be quick mind because you're out of spaces I'm like you are the least helpful bloody parking attendant i've ever met in my life i like this guy so yeah. i goes i goes to asda and Chocker. Retail park right next to the stadium, gridlocked. No one's moving. So I finally get into the car park of Asda and I just parked in there. So I'm probably going to get a parking fine. But I was like, if I try and get back to that car park, A, it might be full by now, and B, it's going to take me an hour to get to the other side of the road anyway. So it's just abysmal. I'm sorry. Like, I'm so, what am I supposed to be sorry for not having fifteen pounds cash to pay for parking with? It's twenty twenty four, man. Like pathetic, genuinely pathetic uh, infrastructure set up around the game. I go into the stadium, 
I don't know where the person who reckons there was 20,000 people got that number there from, right? According to Wikipedia, Cardiff City Stadium capacity is 33,000, meaning that it was two-thirds full. There was no bugger sat in the opposite stand. There was nobody there. There was barely anybody behind the posts. There was That stadium was half full at best. There was I was sat in the red seats higher up. The bar up there empty ghost town nobody there i had nobody sat for three seats either side of me i had no one sat behind me like J james and jamie came and got me and said there's three seats next to us come and sit with us right never in a million years was there twenty thousand people there in terms what of I funny, sorry go on no jump in mate i say what i find funny is they often say that the camera adds 10 pounds to you when you're on camera, I can guarantee you it does not add 10,000 people to a stadium <laughs> to make up attendance figures. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more. I was watching on the television and nowhere near 20,000 people in that crowd, nowhere near it. And so there was that. The firework display of the game was cool. I like the big pink smoke. And uh, I, went, I went into hospitality I didn't have a hospitality ticket. I just walked in. No one stopped me. No one asked for anything. I had a bit of a wander around. Nothing particularly in there to see, to be fair. Um, and then I hated the shtick of it's a Scarlet's home game. And they tried to, all over the tannoy, it was like Scarlet's. And they would like, I don't know whether they had the announcer from the Scarlet's going or anything. It's not a home game. It's not a home game. It's in Cardiff, literally in Cardiff. Or, or not literally in Cardiff, as the case may be. So just bin that. Just say it's not a home game. It's a it's a neutral venue. It's closer to Newport. Let's be honest. Um, so I won't be rushing back there anytime soon. If they put it on there again, I won't go. I'll go to the Principality again if it's on there. Um, but even parking in Cardiff any old way is a nightmare. But I'll go if it's in the proper stadium. And also, just as a side note, 20,000 people for Judgment Day is, even if it was 20,000 people, which was on, is abysmal, is by far the lowest. It's half of what it was last year. It's a disaster. But Scarlet's won, so there you go. But I, I think that's the problem, though, when you have it last game of the season, when three of the four teams have absolutely nothing to play for, as in whatever the result of the first game, it had no reflection whatsoever on league standings. Obviously, getting the win was big for us and a positive way to end the season but in terms of this season it had no bearing whatsoever on what's happened at the table and that's why for me have it much have it before Christmas if you're going to do it have it when there's actually four teams have something to play for um, but yeah in terms of the game I, we won't we won't great again but similar to what I said after the Zebra win we did what we had to do to get a bonus point win. We've ended the season with 10 points out of 10. You can't do more than that. Hopefully the boys build on this now in pre-season, carry this momentum through, and then start of the next season, we, we hit the ground running based on these two results. Because I think for the large part of um, the majority of the team we that started on Saturday, if fit, will probably start against Benetton. So there's not going to be that many changes to the squad, to the team. And I, I think that's a... Mm. Certainly, a good place to start. And of for the me, starting fifteen, only Combia won't be there in Benison. Yeah, exactly. So there's potentially for fourteen of those fifteen to start the next game, next league competitive game, and I think that's just massive in terms of building from here now. Because when you think about it, we've had a, an abysmal season, a disaster of a year, but we've ended with ten points out of ten. And regardless of who our opposition was and the quality that they offered against us in those two games, you can't ask the boys to do more than that. Yeah, so, I mean, looking at that 15, going into next season, I think the only people that might not start is obviously whoever comes in for Combia. And then Alec Hepburn might get a nod over Matthias. Um, I think Harry O'Connor is keeping that shirt because, you know, even if we do sign Henry Thomas, which basically was guaranteed by him being selected for Wales, it means that he's been in a Wales squad, so he'll want to have extra time out. Or blah, blah. He's come off a top 14, or I think it's a top 14 season. So, you know, he's probably a bit of a rough. So, mm. yeah, that that is still, you know, 90% of our match day 15 going into next season. 
onto the game itself, and I've already said his name, Mario Connor. Oh my god, I know not many people will pick out a prop unless they do something absolutely fantastic. He was outstanding, and I literally I went back and watched every single scrum involving a Welsh tight end this weekend. He is the only one that did not crumble. I mean, Azerati and Litterick were taken to the absolute cleaners. And, you know, even Nicky Smith and Gareth Thomas, they, you know, they didn't actually have everything every single time. It was basically Azerati normally falling over or Litterick hinging, doing the same thing. So Harry O'Connor is shaped in the scrum and the way he plays it's when you're a prop or if you know what you're looking at in the scrum, you're looking for that profile. You're looking for how they keep their feet positioned and you're looking for how they move when the scrum moves, blah, 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 blah. And Harry O'Connor was just outstanding. He was an absolute rock of us in that scrum for that game. And, you know, Roddy Jones is no mug. You know, if it weren't for the fact that Gatland messed him around trying to convert him to a tight end, he'd be a 50 cap loose head. I've no doubts of that in my mind. So, and the one thing I'm like, uh, <laughs> I was just going to say, and, I wonder who in this pod was part of the front row union when they played. <laughs> and uh, what one thing I've already said uh, last week, I've probably said uh, the last couple of times I've been on these last few games for the Scarlets, Kemsley Mathias and Harry O'Connor, they are carrying more and they're carrying more effectively, you know. Kemsley's already a good carrier. We knew that anyway. Kemsley's in the Wales squad because of his carrying. Yeah. Yeah. And but it's gotten even better. And I know this is probably the third, at least the third time in a row, me saying this. They are improving on that game at Scarlet and now using them more. I don't know if that's Albert Vandenberg saying, look, these boys can carry, bloody use them. But you know. Something's changed. We know something's changed at the Scarlet's where the coaches are, where there's a belief. Uh, Harry do, you come definitely... from, do you think that's come from Team Wales asking them to t- tell your props, we need you to carry more, we need you to put... I, I don't, I'm just wondering, I, I don't know, is it something that's come from the top saying, right, we want props who carry for 50, 60 minutes, then we'll swap them out. Do you think that's something that they've been asked to do? I mean, that's, that's possible. I'd rather think it's one of our own coaches, but yeah, that's... Obviously, a possibility. You know, um, is this is Jonathan Humphrey still the forwards coach for Wales? Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, if he hasn't done it in the last three years, I doubt he would have done it in the last couple of months. So that that's not saying it could didn't happen. I just don't think it's particularly likely. Okay, so back to it. No, I'm I love those boys, and I know people will have a, there are a lot of haters when Matthias is involved because of his scrummaging. And I say that with these little bunny ears for anyone listening in. Because just because a prop gives away penalties at the scrum, that does not mean they're a bad scrummager. You've literally got to look at every single scrum as a singular instance to see what went wrong and if that ref actually got it right. Because nine times out of the ten, refs don't get it right. You know, I, I can gladly say that. I just go back to the game, me and Hill watch against Cardiff, when Matthias got pinged what it feels like five, six times, and he ended up on the yellow card. And yeah, probably about seven of his 23 penalties were in that game. Yeah, and he didn't deserve a single one of them. And I'll say that. Uh, Carolyn, did you want to chime in with something, but Well, yeah, interesting talking about refs getting it right. Um, Eddie James, Sinbin... Is has there been a more ridiculous decision this season? Um, I'm not sure what more you could tell him to do did, in that tackle. Did, was the was the initial contact with his head? No, I don't think. I don't think there's no. There was no contact with the head. That's all that happened is when and it, it was such a big hit when an alien when hit the ground, his head went his head, like whip, like a whiplash effect. Um, as far as I could see, it was a perfectly good tackle and just aggression in defence. Something I love seeing, and I wish we'd seen more of it this year. But um, yeah, it just felt like the ref wanted to stamp his authority in the game and gave him a yellow card, where there was probably more of a case for Mr. Sam Lousy being 
yellow carded for his hit on um, on Rodri Jones. Um, but yeah, I just I just I don't know, I just find officiating is too inconsistent, especially from the URC at the moment, and it's just it, it spoils games. It it yeah. really spoils games. Looking at the Eddie James incident, if you could stand a fully upright Eddie James next to his position when he made contact, he was probably lower than his knee. That's how low he was when he made that mm. contact. And for, for me, I thought he hit like upper chest, like you know, yeah. somewhere between his somewhere between you know his nipple line and the shoulder line. You know, and I didn't see any head contact, whether or not his head went forward and you know his nose brushed it. No, but even in that instance, that's a good point, actually. That, play there. That's a good point, actually. It's difficult to hit someone's head towards you, isn't it? Because if you if you remember how it went, Owen's head went forward like that. That's not that's not what happens to your head, unless you, I suppose if you hit him in the chin, I guess. But I I felt it was I only saw it on the big screen. I felt it was a, a whiplash thing that was going on, and again, just going off. Eddie James's actions. Eddie James hasn't made an illegal action. Yeah, no, there's there's no way to interpret the foul play has happened, and that's something that Craig Evans said when he was, you know, going through the decision of a yellow card. And I'm 100 percent with you, Carl. When you know, Lousy probably not probably Lousy deserved a yellow card at least, you know. And so we're not saying, oh, all these boys are bloody saints. You know, Eddie James is a bloody saint. Sam Lousy, oof, that reminded me of when he threw that punch a few years back. Probably oh, Eddie yeah. James's best game for a little while now. He's been better these last two games. I don't know whether someone's had a word in Johnny's ear of, yeah, let Eddie have the ball. <laughs> yeah, I, I think well, that's a good space as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we were all, um, I mean, I think especially you here, we were commenting that Johnny Williams is playing at 12 with 13 on his shirt. Mm. He just he, he didn't have the space to do it, and you know, thankfully, these last couple of games he has, and he is showing mm. such a great player he is. Mm. And, and I know I've, I know I've said about him before, you know, with his you know his history at ten, his handling is insane. You know, he is, some of his passes are ridiculous, and something which, especially in in this game, that I noticed with him and with Tommy Lewis, which is. Generally, something you normally accommodate with a 13 is they're not making tackles, but where they are making runs uh, in the defensive line, they are cutting plays dead. And Eddie James and Tommy Lewis specifically, they, they did that so many times against the Dragons. I was sat behind um, Tommy Lewis's godmother. So she was filming all the time and going, go Tommy and things. He had a great game. He was. I mean, he ended prematurely for him and and I obviously I, I didn't catch it at the time. I didn't catch him limping up, you know, them, you know, arm in arm, carrying him, helping him off the field. So I went back to have a look at it and it's like, oh no. I mean, I, I think Peel has come out or someone has come out and said they think it's his Achilles, hmm. which would be absolutely disastrous. You know, since you know he was finally given, you know, the shirt, which should have been his from the first game of the season. Taken a couple of games to sell, but by God, he's been outstanding these last four or five fixtures. Mm-hmm. I mean, three tries, uh, four tries in the last three games, and this, this not anything to not like about it. I mean, his, cha- his chasing kicks is, is really good. He's retaining some of those kicks, which it, makes it even better. His completely flat pass that was fine. Uh, was oh yeah, that was just poor was painting. Poor painting by the groundsman. The line wasn't straight. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the pass. <laughs> no, I mean. <laughs> There's this thing, I know I've said this in the group, but there's this thing that governs our world called physics and momentum is one of those things. Look it up. The TMO, why? You, you look at the hands, you know what I mean? It, it took, it did take us half an hour to get going though. Once we scored that first try, the boys perked up a bit. The first half hour was a tough watch. It was like, these are two poor teams. Probably Eddie James was the only guy playing well on the in the first yeah. half hour. Yeah, let's be honest. No beating out of the bush. The, the quality of the game wasn't great. It was clearly visible that two teams who were where they are in the league position mm. because of the way they played this year. But um, 
boys grew in confidence as the game went on. Mm-hmm. Nothing phased them, even when Eddie James uh, got sin bin. They were solid in defence. As in, we scored. Took, we we got we yeah, took the lead with fourteen men. It it took the Dragons like seven minutes to realise they're an extra man. And Steph Hughes did a crossfield kick, and um, yeah, just I don't know what's happened this last month or so, but they, they look united as a squad. And at times this That's, year, sorry, Kevin. No, so at times this year it hasn't looked like that's been there, but it's certainly there's a bond there now. I feel the same thing happened last year. There was a complete change in men in mentality, and we started kicking for three more, and we started just result over performance, and that's what we did last year, and we started doing it this year. So let's just fingers crossed we don't chuck it all the way over the summer again. That's that's what I'm hoping because last season we looked. We probably look better at the end of last season than we look now. And we managed to lose it all over the course of a long summer. So that's what I'm just praying that we don't do again is lose all this good form. But we got some consistency in selection. Only two changes to the 15 last two games. It's obviously Dwayne confirmed listener. Also, um, shout out Carwin to Apollo as well. Has been um, liking and sharing all our stuff lately on socials. Carwin, if you do listen, we think you're great. Keep doing what you're doing. You had a fantastic season. Come and on and join us. Shame you're not in the bloody squad, especially yeah. over Martin. Oh. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, happy with the win. Look, you know what? If you, it doesn't matter how it comes to you. If you, if you're a fan of your team, and your team wins. You can't be happy about that. Come on. So I am happy that the Scarlets won. So, okay, uh, question. Oh, first, just before I do this, we know the players who we can rely on every week, and thankfully it's the spine. It's Elias, Craig, uh, Eddie James, Sam Costello, Johan Nicholas. We can rely on all those. We can rely on Tommy Lewis every week. And just well, the back row unit, I think, as well. You can back row unit. Road. Tame Plumtree, we can rely on every week. He, I, I don't think we can overstate how much of an impact he's made to the team since and he's, he's not even in. close to being hundred percent yet. Yeah, I th- yeah. he's he's very clearly injured. <laughs> um, the uh, I just I'm a little bit unsure about Cowdor at the moment. He seems to be just going through a rough patch. But look, I said weeks ago, just play him through it, and he'll come back. So I'm like, yeah. Continue playing him. So, I got asked on another podcast, Ooh. when when will the Scarlets be back in the playoffs of the URC? And I said, next season. Yeah. <laughs> so, now, when I thought back on what I'd said, I realized that probably sounds a bit mental. But here's my, here's my reasoning. The top, as I've as I've doubled down many a time, the top Welsh team should be in the playoffs because how the structure of the league works. And Scarlet's expectation is to be the top Welsh team. And that's kind of something we're a little bit proud of about this season is how the fans haven't accepted the bad performances and how the team, even though we had nothing to play for in the last few games, didn't throw in the towel. Yes, they weren't great, but they were like, they they had a drive behind them to prove people that they were good and we do have a, i think we have a mid table squad that is capable of getting seventh or eighth in the in the urc so because finishing top welsh region is our target every year and we've got a reasonably decent fixture list and if you need 10 wins we've won five this season when probably the worst season we've ever had and we've still won five games so to get that those extra five Say the Lions game, the Dragons game, that's seven. Uh, Chuck in an Ospreys win there at home. Uh, Edinburgh at home. Yeah, so there you go. So there's 10. But so, Edinburgh, had 11 wins, Edinburgh had 11 wins this year and, and, and not in the playoffs. Bonus points, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. They're not, so, yeah, they didn't score a lot of try bonuses. So it's a little bit mad. So I'll let you I'll go to Carwin first. So Am I just stupid for thinking that the Scarlets have even a hope in hell of being in the playoffs next season? I don't think you're stupid for thinking it. I think it's possible. I think what goes against us is our three last fixtures in the fact that Leinster at home, 
Lions away, Sharks away. Our record in South Africa isn't great. Um, okay, we're playing Leinster, I think, the weekend before the European semi-finals. I'd like to think that we'd have a semi-final the weekend after that as well, so that we'd have one eye on that. So it's just whether or not we'll have enough of a buffer to not pick up a lot of points in those last three games. Mm. Um, I think we'll be in the hunt and we'll have a top 10 finish. We just need a bit of luck to go our way. A bit like um, another Welsh season had this year when they had 2% chance of qualifying and everything fell right for them when it needed to. If we have that sort of luck next year, we make the playoffs. If we don't have that luck, we just miss out. But I, I do genuinely believe we'll be in the hunt for a playoff place. And if we don't get it next season, the season after, I fully expect us to be there. Well, if you look at the, the results that they got, so beating the other Welsh regions, Zebra at home, uh, Lions at home, which we've got. So we've got those... I oh know, we'll be Lions away this se next season. Yeah, we've got Stormers and but, Bulls at home. But yeah. we, might, we might get a favourable Bulls team come up to us. Uh, what other games did they win? So they got Stormers away was their big one, their big surprise one. They beat Ulster at home as well, which was another big one. Mm. Although Ulster were oh, shocking that day, it has to be said. I mean, the coach got sacked the next day. It was that bad. Yeah. Um, but then they lost to Dragons away. So you, you sub that one in and then sub mm. in a win over a Scottish team, whichever won. And I just don't feel like it's beyond the realms of possibility. So they, they won five games last season and have won 10 this season. So, yeah, I think I, it's I think the problem we've got though is against the Scottish teams this year. We did we lost forty five three and forty three eighteen. Yeah, I think I think the heavy turnarounds you need to to win those, but mm. it's not think, beyond the realm of possibility. I think the major thing we've got to look at is what caused this season, and the main thing for me is coach cohesion, and we've had Oliver's list. We're not losing any more coaches. We we do have one to come in. So I I think now that that is settled, we got people in you know, effective mm. roles. I think, you know, 11, 12 wins is, is very achievable. Obviously, we'd need to go above and beyond for that. But even though there are away fixtures, I think Munster and Ulster do in the Six Nations. I, I think those are, Munster's probably a stretch too far, but I think Ulster is certainly achievable. You know, even if you go, especially if you're going off this season, you know, every year can be different. I mean, you can go from, you know, three wins one to 12 wins the next. You know, it, it's not an exact science. Teams can gel mm. at different points. If you gel in the summer before a season starts, boom. If you gel at a random point and then go on and win the Rainbow Cup when no one expected you to, Things can happen that way. And like you said, a favourable ball side comes up. Stormers don't travel very well. They are two South African home games. And look, I know it's a you know, stupid million miles high in the sky. Lions are, are beatable away. They, they can be beat. You have to so, get your game plan right, but it can happen. And, you know, if we decide to go with, you know, a, a kick-in team, we might have a chance. So it's... Things are not as impossible as people might think. Oh, Scarlet's making making the playoffs, and it's especially when it's top eight. It's only half. That that is the that's the target. That's that mm. should be achievable. And if Ospreys, Scarlet's, and Cardiff, even if only one of us make it, if all three of us don't go into the start of the season and go in, we are making the playoffs. There's something wrong. The Scarlet's should always. The target is always top Welsh region. The minimum target. I just think we need to get better at losing as well. This year, we've been blown away in the first two yeah. minutes. Heads of jumps and games over. Mm. And that's where I'm sort of jealous of Cardiff, is even when they've lost, and sometimes they've blown it themselves, but in other games, they've dug in and stayed in games. If 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 I think we won a game more, but they had seven points, seven yeah. more losing points than us. Um, it's just about... Being in games that you're not expecting to win, mm. but nicking a bonus point here or getting four ties there—it's just 
trying to stay in games for as long as possible, not giving up. And yeah. because it's a talented team, we're, we're not lacking quality. We just need belief f- within that quality that we can compete, win, stay in games for 80 minutes. Yeah, look, and we, we've already well run over our allotted time anyway, but I do not like looking at other Welsh regions to where we should be. And if I look at Cardiff, even though, oh, we've had all these losing bonus points, if the Sharks do not make the Challenge Cup final, we finish above them in the league. That is it. That is the only difference between us and Cardiff. Sharks get eliminated, semi-final, quarter-final. They go strong against Cardiff. They win that game. Cardiff finish one below us. They've not had a great season. I don't know why anyone thinks finishing within seven of your ten losing of seven of your ten losing games or however many is makes it a good season. It it doesn't. Shit season for Scarlets, Cardiff, and Dragons. We've had the most wins. I can kind of take that. And the fact knowing that other teams effectively throwing games is what caused Cardiff to go above us. We we've um used the fewest players as well. Yeah. I mean that's 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 always a good sign when you talk about uh, consistency, even though yeah, but we've we've made more game on game changes changes than both Cardiff and Ospreys who have we've used, probably used more we've players. Probably used than 46, us. We've probably used forty six players and had a no twenty three every fucking week. Yeah. That's our consistency. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's what we that's what we've lacked this year, isn't it? Is that consistency and partnerships being built across the field where mm. which wins you games and yeah. hopefully stability next season and we we'll be in a stronger position. Can I have we got time? Can I ask a question or have we run over Go that? For it. Go for it. Go for it. We'll, we'll, we'll be later, Johnny right? Williams being omitted from the Welsh squad, does that raise any concerns that he may not be a Scarlet player next season? Uh, I think so. It it does from the outside looking in, but for me, him not being selected. Uh, and I know he was carded and all that, but he would have surely been told if he was going to be involved in the Six Nations. I think that was the time to be worried. And the fact that we haven't heard nothing since then, you know, that just tells me that he's just trying to iron out a few extra things with us. You know, obviously, if we knew he was leaving, if we knew he had no intention of re-signing with us, he'd have been on our leavers list. That's, that's where I am. I, I, I get the concern, but and I, I was here. I could be a hundred percent wrong in this. I hope I'm not, but I I don't think it's an issue as as it stands. Do we have any more questions to round off? No. Okay. Well, uh, thank you all for listening to another very long week of the Scarlet Steel podcast. Uh, the season might be over for the Scarlets, but it's not over for us. We're going to be doing uh, some squad review over the next few weeks before finally realising, you know, we might have to spend some time with our families over the summer. So uh, thank you, lads, for joining me. And uh, I look forward to talking about a nice red win next week. But try, boys. Cheers.